Hello, I'm Michael Mercer with Keeping Kids Safe, and uh, we have a guest today, Representative Amy Volk, and uh, thank you for being here with us, Amy. Thank you, Michael. I'm excited to listen uh, a little bit and talk a little bit about what uh, what your plans are. Um, uh, you're running for uh, office now. You hold a position right now, and, and yep. what's that position? Um, currently, I'm state representative for Coastal Scarborough, District 127, and I'm running for Senate. So um, it's District 30, covers most of Scarborough, all of Gorham, and most of Buxton. Great. And Keeping Kids Safe has, has worked with you, and you've worked with us, uh, and we certainly support you. Uh, and, and especially in the, the anti-trafficking bill mm -hmm. that you, uh, you uh, sponsored and, 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 co and, and wrote uh, that was uh, then eventually uh, signed into bill. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me a little bit why you felt you needed to be involved in, uh, in something uh, to involve yourself in the, the anti-sex trafficking? Sure. Well, um, sex trafficking is something that I have known about for a long time. Um, and so I knew that a lot of times, um, or almost all the time, when you have a lot of drug trafficking, then sex trafficking goes hand in hand. And Maine has a huge problem with um, drug abuse, especially with prescription drugs. So it just makes sense that where um, we have a high rate of drug trafficking, that we're going to have sex trafficking as an issue here in the state as well. You know, I, I agree 100%. I, I'm a retired police officer, and, uh, you know, I see, I, I never really recognized that, uh, that sex trafficking was so rampant in Maine. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked here, and I also worked in Arizona, and, and I kind of knew, but I think the paradigm, and because of your bill, that law enforcement, uh, the, the thought and the paradigm that, that law enforcement have is changing because of your bill, because uh, law enforcement is, and uh, the criminal justice system in itself is uh, more aware mm -hmm. and more educated that these girls are not out there because they want to be out there, that they're actually out there because right. they're victims. Can you tell me a little bit about, about that? Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that that sort of education was beginning to happen before I introduced my bill. But there was a lot of um, press coverage of the bill because of the fact that it was initially rejected. Um, because it was the <clears throat> second session of the legislature and um, bills have to be justified on some sort of emergency basis and approved by a, bar a part bipartisan legislative um, council. And unfortunately, on the first go around, they um, questioned whether or not this was truly an issue in Maine and um, even suggested that I had submitted it for political reasons, which couldn't have been further from the truth. In fact, at the time, I um, absolutely had no intention of even running for re-election, let alone running for Senate. Um, so, you know, eventually they did approve the bill and it was sent to the Judiciary Committee. And the, I went into the Judiciary Committee and I said, you know, I want to put the partisan rancor behind us, and I want this bill to be bipartisan. Um, I want everyone to work on it together, and not only that, but I would like to have a unanimous report out of this committee. So let's work together. Mm -hmm. And we did. Um, and so the product is an excellent product that um, law enforcement has told me on more than one occasion they're actually using. Um, and so I couldn't have been more more pleased, and um, Governor LePage was very happy to sign it into law as as an emergency. Yeah, oh, that's great. Now, mm -hmm. now that we have a law with your name on it, yeah. um, I did see that there was a, 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 a statewide task force uh, that was just put together uh, yes. for for sex trafficking. So that that uh, you can see, I can see uh, where the hard work that you put into uh, writing that. Uh, proposal, that bill, uh, then now to law has now uh, made it possible for um, certain arms of the government to be able to recognize, number one, sex trafficking is here, mm -hmm. how do we stop it? And so there are a lot of education, a lot of different um, uh, organizations involved with, uh, with the anti-sex trafficking movement. I yeah. call it a movement because we are uh, part of that movement, keeping kids safe is involved with the education and awareness part 
uh, you know, and, and being involved with, uh, and I think this whole wheel, we all play a part in the wheel. Absolutely, And yeah. uh, we all have a, a, a spoke in this wheel. Mm -hmm. um, your goals as we see, uh, as you move forward uh, as a center, did you see mm -hmm. any, any more legislation going through or how do you see yourself as uh, going forward at this point? Yeah, well, one of the things that, um, one of the pieces of the bill that we weren't able to get um, passed because it was going to result in a fiscal note, meaning there would be a cost attached, and in tight budget times, that's sort of the death knell for, for, for some bills. So, um, but a direct requ request from a drug prosecutor in Cumberland County was to have it be a, um, an enhanced charge if you furnish drugs to um, a, um, a prostitute or someone who is being sex, sex trafficked. And she actually felt that that would be an easier charge in some cases um, to get somebody on, but that would result in longer prison sentences right. and hence the increased cost. Right. So we didn't get that into the, the what became law, mm -hmm. but I would possibly like to see us try again on that. Um, and, you know, I, I would be willing to submit anything that law enforcement thinks that they need. Um, you know, part of what I did in writing this legislation was to meet with um, various members of law enforcement as well as some of the special interest groups and, um, like I said, get everybody on board. And it's about protecting victims. You know, we're talking about young women and sometimes even men. Mm -hmm. um, you don't hear about men as right. much, but I've seen one study that was done in the Atlanta area where they discovered that it was close to 50% of sex trafficking victims were male. Right. So we can't forget the young men out there as well. A lot of times these are runaways mm -hmm. um, and they're lured by an adult who acts as though they're going to be their their um, patron in some way or their right. boyfriend and you know they take them to get their nails done and their hair done and they take them shopping right. and and then you know they they sort of lure them in that way and they furnish them with narcotics as well right. and they get them hooked and so um, we definitely need to continue to um, make sure that we're being proactive but I did want to mention there actually was a sex trafficking task force in Maine and mm -hmm. the problem was that um, it hadn't been funded and so they had lost their staffing but mm -hmm. they were continuing to meet okay. and they just hadn't really been able to accomplish a whole lot because of the lack of staffing. Um, however this new task force my understanding is it's actually international in nature so we're working with our neighbors in canada as well as um, in other states new hampshire and massachusetts to make sure that um, and federal authorities to make sure that you know there's a comprehensive approach to this problem right well a lot of work has been done you you continue to do great work uh you know keeping kids safe is very involved with uh uh, the uh, child sex trafficking mm -hmm. uh, to us, to keeping kids safe. Child prostitution should, should never ever be in the same sentence. Um, you're a child and, and um, you don't, you can't uh, uh, consent right. to that. Absolutely uh, so it's, it's child rape to me right. uh, and we're going to do everything possible to get the awareness and education out among schools, amongst youth groups and uh, let all these kids know that there are bad people out there that, that want to do harm. Right. And uh, the more education, more awareness that is, surrounds this, your bill, and surrounds this topic, mm -hmm. at least we're having people talk about it. Absolutely. Uh, people's heads are coming out of the sand. Yeah. So I really appreciate you coming by today, Thank you. Amy. Thanks and for having good me. luck with the campaign. Thank you. And best wishes in the upcoming election. Appreciate it, Mike, and Great. all that you do. Great. Thank you.